Hello lovely people, this week I am back with an individual book review of Life... Ugh, that's the first book. This is the sequel. Let's try again. This week I am back with a individual book review of A God in Ruins by Kate Atkinson. This is kind of the second book in a series, so what I shall try and do is give a non-spoiler small plot setup of the first book, just in case you haven't read it, and I will attempt to talk about this in a spoiler-free way, which I think is possible, because it's a tangentially related book, not a direct continuation of events. So, to explain, the first book in this series is called Life After Life, and our main character is Ursula, Ursula Todd, and Ursula is born after World War One, but before World War Two. so as she grows up, um, World War Two becomes a topic. And the basic premise of Life After Life is that every time Ursula dies, she starts her life again, from the exact same point. So the book is essentially Ursula living her life over and over and over again. Every time she dies, she's reborn, you start again, that sort of thing. And as you go along with Ursula and you're sort of pondering about why this keeps happening, what is the purpose of it, these sorts of questions, you're also getting a really interesting look at Britain and the Blitz. So um, because she keeps dying and having different lives over and over again, you get to see a whole different bunch of perspectives about what life during the Blitz was like. And all this sort of thing, those sorts of topics. I won't tell any more than that to avoid any more spoilers, but that's like the plot setup, and you know that as soon as you start the book, so there's no spoilers there. This book, A God in Ruins, um, focuses on a different member of Ursula's family, and this time it's Teddy. If you've read the first book, you'll understand why it's an interesting choice that it's Teddy that we focus on rather than any of her other siblings. Um, so this book has a different narrative mode than Life After Life, because Life After Life had these repeating, um, you still the same, you're all one point of view, and you're just repeating a lifetime over and over again, different outcomes, blah blah blah, a recurring cast of characters, that sort of thing. Whereas this um, looks at Teddy, it looks at Teddy's daughter, and then it looks at Teddy's grandchildren, so along with some other people as well. So rather than this repetition, you have a lot more interweaving of um, different points of view, but the repetition does come back a little bit because you get the same scenes, but you get to see them from the other character's point of view. So you see the ways in which our perception like alters how we experience a moment, and you get to see certain key moments of Teddy's lives and of his family members' lives from a couple of different perspectives. So there is still like a repetition element, it's just not this recurring, reliving the life over and over and over again type thing. Um, this was interesting, because whereas the first book was very much focused on the Blitz, the second book is um, a lot more focused on um, being a pilot in the war. So there's a, a, a big theme of World War II and being a fighter pilot in World War II and what that entailed and that sort of thing, and then there's like a second theme, which is sort of family, and the the thing I found most compelling, I think, about the family side of this story is the way that these multiple points of view let you see these moments that are missed. What I mean by moments that are missed, I think, is this, um, the achingly sad way in which misunderstandings and miscommunications and just not communicating things to the full extent just cause these little fractures between people that is achingly sad when you read about them um, and there's a, a number of moments in this book where there are characters who are they're like you know I don't know what this is supposed to indicate that you know like they're just not in they're not clicking into place they're like going past each other and it's all these defenses and assumptions and all this stuff that is so true to life you know just sometimes you overthink and someone else overthinks and you get all of these, you build up all of these opinions and assumptions and if you just like sat down with someone and were really like talk to them honestly and as honestly as you could without all your defences going up you might be able to get somewhere and then this whole book is like this battle between can you get somewhere and all of this stuff so this whole, it's not miscommunication it's just like these missed opportunities I think which was, which was just quite 
compelling to read whilst also being a bit sad. Character-wise, this book was interesting because, um, for example, Teddy is a character who I personally really liked, whereas his daughter is a character who I personally do not like, and you're not really supposed to like her, but you can see how she has become the person she is, it's just the person she is is not very nice. <laughs> This book sort of left me with the knowledge that it's so important to make the effort to talk to your older relatives and stuff like that while you still can, while they're still around. Like there's a moment in this when he's going around one of the um, World War II memorial graveyards with his grandson and he's talking away and he thinks his grandson is not at all interested but he's just talking anyway. And then you get the scene from his grandson's perspective and his grandson is so interested, it's just he's so overwhelmed by the sadness of being around all of these um, graves that he's just not finding the ability to be able to re contribute something back to that. As someone who uh, a lot of my grandparents have passed away, there are so many things about their lives, about what they did, about what they did in World War II specifically, because that's a really, you know, um, I don't want to say interesting time period because that sounds a bit bad, but like I have relatives who did really interesting things during the war. I have someone who I was related to was a conscientious projector, someone who I was related to um, was a fireman, someone was a Bevan boy, and it just means, um, you know, I just wish I'd talked about it a bit more, and talked about just life, you know, their life a bit more, but I was too young, and that wasn't really the sort of thing that I, I thought of doing, and something that this book made me feel was the importance of talking to people and keeping these stories alive and just remembering things. I feel like this is getting super rambly. Um, it was all so coherent in my head and then I started recording. Um, I think what I'm essentially saying is this read really easily. I really like Kate Atkinson's writing style. I find it very easy to read. I find it really in, quite like an enjoyable read. Um, I found the plot interesting. I think it took me, I had a slight adjustment because this is a different format and a different focus than the first book. It took me a little while to be like, well, how does this relate to Life After Life? Why are we telling this story? And I will say that by the end of this book, I absolutely understood why we were telling this story. That's about everything I wanted to say. I just wanted to do a quick little brain dump as to why I enjoyed this book. Um, if you have read this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. How do you think it compares to the first book? How was your reading experience? Everything like that. Um, otherwise, I hope you're having a really lovely day, and I will see you next week.